my name's Ruan and this is my channel The Yorkshire Sew Girl. So by the time you watch this it will be Friday again um, and I have decided this week to do a review of this. So I have done a version of this and the lovely Renata from the Twilight Stitcher has also done a Lyra at the same time. So we're both kind of reviewing our versions today. So if you haven't watched Renata from um, the Twilight Stitcher, then go and have a look. I will pop her thingamajig below so you can go and have a watch because she's great. And um, we've both done completely different Lyra's. And what I'll do is I'll review mine and then I will put some versions of um, Renata's into this video so that you can have a look because I think it's really interesting to see how versatile this pattern is. So you'll see my version, I'm going to talk you through that now and then you can pop over to Renata's and have a look and see her version. So hi if any of you guys are have been sent here from Renata's channel as well. Um, I hope it's been good for you to see the other side of the Lyra as well. What I'll do is I'll quickly talk through sizing and all that jazz. So for anybody who hasn't seen this or hasn't seen any of my videos before or who has lived potentially in a cave recently because this has been all over, this is the Lyra pattern from Tilly and the Buttons. This is their latest release and it's been incredibly popular and I've seen loads and loads of them on Instagram and they are gorgeous. Now... For anybody who's already followed my channel, you know I'm not a dress kind of girl. I'm trying to venture into that side of things. So I'm trying to be a bit experimental with dresses. Now, when I first saw this pattern, I wasn't that interested in it. I'm not a long dress kind of person either, or maybe I am, and I haven't discovered that yet. Um, but then I saw this on the back of the packet and I did a little squeal. So that's it there. Notice something familiar in the background? Yeah, so this, as soon as I saw it in the shirt version with short sleeves to the knee, I was just, I mean, I think it's basically the fabric that won it for me. It just totally swung my opinion. And I was literally, I need to make that dress, that exact same dress. I need it in my life. So, I bought the fabric and the pattern from Planet Make It. They had, I think it was 15 or 20% off offer at the time. Um, absolute justification in purchasing. Um, and I bought the fabric and the pattern from them. It got delivered. I was chatting to Renata about it one day on Instagram messaging. And she said, oh yeah, I've bought it as well. Shall we both do like a kind of different version to show its versatility? So that's what we've done. So, um... I'll talk you through my version. So, short sleeved, short version. My measurements, sorry, I've written them down here just so I don't forget them, because you know what, I'm like a bit of a scatterbrain. I start just doing everything ad hoc and then you're probably drifting off because I'm talking a load of rubbish. I will put my measurements below, but for anybody who doesn't know, I'm a bust 39, a waist 34 and a hips 42. Now, I'm not gonna deny, since Christmas, I've put a little bit of weight on but I don't seem to have got off just yet. I mean, the plan was to have it all off by now, but so I haven't actually measured myself since then, but I could be pushing those measurements slightly. They might be a little bit larger than that, but I'm just going to be in denial for a little bit of time. So just give me that, okay, for now. And we'll see um, if I can get shift that little bit of weight that I've put on. Um, so my measurements came out on a bust, on my bust between a size five and six, on my waist, a definite six, and my hips are five slash six. But in this pattern, there's a lot of ease. And um, in the billy dress for Tilly and the Buttons, um, I went down to a size five. I did the jumper in a size six, and then I did the dress version in a size five, and the five was definitely the fit for me. So because this pattern's got an awful lot of ease in it, I was like, yeah, it's gonna be safe to kind of go with a size five. So that's what I've done. Um, for a size five, the finished measurements are a bust of 43, so that gave me four inches of ease, which is quite a lot, 
a waist of 40 and a quarter. Well, I'm a 34 on my waist, so that's like over six inches ease. And then a hip of 64 and a half. So you can see the amount of ease in that. And that's because the dress is supposed to be what they called on the sewing be a buffet dress. So loads of room. Now I'm used to slightly tighter fitting clothes, so I wasn't quite sure whether it was going to suit me or not. Um, but like I said, I'm trying to experiment with different styles. And I think just because I've not worn that before doesn't mean that because I'm not used to it, that it doesn't look nice on my body and that it's not something that I want to wear in the future. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. So I made a size five. I added one inch to the bodice because I'm five foot nine. So I am quite tall. Um, and I can't remember, is it drafted for five foot six, I think? I'm itching, sorry. I, do you know, when I look back at my videos, I'm always scratching something, sorry. And I'm always fiddling about with my hair. I was going to say farted about with my hair, but someone's just told me that I shouldn't be swearing on my YouTube videos, so I'm sorry about that. I'm always pumping about with my hair. What do you call a fart? <laughs> We call it a cheeky trump in our house. Anyway, I digress. I added an inch to the bodice and I added an inch and a half to the length and that came right to my knee. And what I'll do is I'll pop a few photos up here so that you can see what it looks like on. Now, you have got options to make a tie with this dress as well. And I don't, I haven't made the tie to go with it, but you'll see from my photos, there is quite a bit of ease in it um and it's taken a bit of getting used to but you know what i absolutely loved wearing it i mean excuse the white pasty legs as well in these photos but you know <laughs> where's the sun gone in the uk because you're supposed to be heading towards the summer and all it's done is rain for the last month uh, so my legs are actually whiter than snow i mean they're almost like a pale shade of blue they are that white um so i kind of blend into the white from the dress sorry about that luckily you can't see too much of my legs which is a good thing but you'll see I've got white pumps on and my legs are pretty much the same colour <laughs> anyway um yeah so there's a lot there is quite a lot of room in it but I'm quite happy with that now I've worn it for the day I actually quite liked the luxury of being able to eat what I want and not worry about it but you can do a tie in it and I have had a look because I didn't have that much fabric left to see whether I could do a tie or maybe someone had suggested on my comments as well putting in a tie into the seam but do you know what? I think I'm going to go with it for now. Um, I can always put a belt on, can't I, if I really want to. The other thing is, I don't know if I needed to add an inch to the bodice. I think if I maybe made it again, I'd maybe leave the inch out and just see what it looked like. I mean, it doesn't make too much difference. When you look at the photos, you'll see. But I'm wondering whether maybe I don't need that extra inch, but maybe to just lengthen the skirt. Who knows? Anyway, now, because I've seen Renata's dress and she's made it in a completely different fabric and she looks like an angel in it. I mean, it's very ethereal compared to this thing where you won't miss me in the dark. Um, it's kind of made me start thinking that I want to do the longer version in like a nice, beautiful viscose. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm, I'm that might be on the cards, maybe not straight away, but in, you know, in a couple of months, maybe, because I've been very inspired by Renata's um, dress. And I do want to try different styles. So maybe a nice, long, flowy, viscosy one would suit. Um, yeah, and I've not got too much fabric left of that. I could probably make a tie if I patched it. And obviously with that kind of fabric, it's not too much of a bother, is it? Because you wouldn't really be able to see that it's been kind of patched together. So I don't know. The jury's out on that one. Um, so how it was sewn up, the instructions. Very good. As always, till in the buttons, hold your hand, don't they? All the way through. Um, I did struggle with the collar. I am not going to lie. Now, I've done collars before, no issue. But, so, you have a collar stand and a collar piece. And then you interface one of each. So, you cut one on the bias of each. And then you interface one each. And that is very cleverly done so that the underside is cut on the bias. So, that it sits really nicely as it curves around. Because you have to ease the collar in now when that's interface as well it can be sometimes quite difficult to do that and I got myself a bit confused with the side that should be interfaced the side that shouldn't blah, 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 when I was doing it 
I've got a bit of a hot sweat about it actually to the point where I have to write out the top colour which is the bias cut piece that is not interfaced is this <laughs> and I don't know if it was just me um I actually went and watched Tamlin from Sun on the Times video because I know she'd struggled with that as well now when I reread the instructions it, 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 does, it totally makes sense but when I was doing it I, I don't know whether the wording maybe could be done differently probably not they've probably looked at all the different options and that is the best way to do it but I got myself in a tiz I think I did it right in the end but I doubted myself halfway through because I just couldn't get my head around it um but I did it um and I'm more than happy with it now when I did ease the neckline in I did have a few puckers which to be fair is underneath the collar so you would never see it but me being me I have to go and unpick those sections and ease them in a bit more and re-sew them um but I have to do that for my own peace of mind because otherwise I'll know it's there underneath my collar like cooey you've made a mistake so I had to do it um but this fabric's just beautiful it's um a lady McElroy I think it's called artisan splash and it's just gorgeous it's a cotton lawn it did what it was told to it pressed really well it was just I cannot complain about it whatsoever and then I put some fuchsia pink buttons you probably can't see this very well on here but you might be able to see it better on the thing um all the way up and then a little turquoise one at the top just to be different you know me but the collar is really beautiful and pristine with that interfacing inside it looks really good as a proper shirt collar i think it'd be interesting to see what it's like in a viscose though to see it in a softer um silhouette and you'll hopefully be able to see that from some of the photos and footage that i've put in of anata and her version so overall really happy with it even though it's not a style that i would normally wear when i wore it i felt incredibly comfortable in it um and i think i probably will make more than one of these um which is good for me because I don't tend to be too much of a repeater um, but if anything it is probably to lean the buttons patterns that I do tend to repeat because they do seem to fit me really well to my body measurements so yeah I think in a couple of months I might start having a look at maybe doing a longer version but in a nice flowy viscose that's the plan anyway so that's my Lyra more than happy with it and I would recommend it the only thing is I think I think it said it's for improvers and I agree with that. I wouldn't say it's for beginners. You've got buttonholes for a start. You've got gathering around the waist. You have got a collar to insert, which can be quite tricky. Um, now, the other thing for me, sorry, that I didn't mention is when you turn the collar in and you're finishing it all off, you are supposed to stitch in the ditch. Forget it. I am not a stitcher in the ditcher. I can do it. I can do it. But I'm really pedantic about being able to see the stitching if you can see and I know you can get a stitch in the ditch foot I've had one of them and I can do it but I think because I was using white cotton and my fabric is loads of different colours even if it was just like 0.001 millimetres out I could see the white stitching and it was not for me so what I did is I intentionally top stitched it instead around the collar because then I knew it was there and it was kind of meant to be there rather than I've just not done a very good job of stitching in the ditch. So yeah, I did that by the way. Um, right, so uh, that's another thing I noticed as well when I watch my videos back, I say so a lot. Not only do I say so because I'm doing a sewing blog, but I also say so a lot. So, sorry about that. All the things going on this week are I finished my mum's outfit. I put pictures on Instagram. I don't know why I didn't write that down. That's one of the major things. So I finished her outfit for the wedding. I will put some photos here. Um, I put some um, visuals of her on my Instagram page and the amount of amazing comments has been phenomenal. So much so I haven't actually had time to go and reply to any of them. So I'm gonna take some time out tonight to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was the most satisfying thing I think I've ever made. Also the scariest, but the most satisfying. So for anybody who doesn't know, I made an Ogden cami, a simple sew skirt and a Helen Closet Ashton top in stretchy lace to go over the top, as you will see from these photos that my mum has 
very kindly um, posed for. And yeah, I will also put up a picture, if I can find it, of the inspiration behind the outfit. So I almost saw an outfit ages ago and it was over 500 quid and she was like, whoa, I don't think I'll be doing that. But can you make something similar, please? And at first I was like, yeah, of course I can. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I will do. And then when I broke it all down, I had to like a bit mini, mini panic attack because I had to do things that I don't normally do. And I had to think outside the box and someone wasn't going to tell me because I'm a bit of a lazy sewer. I just like to have a pattern and you just do what they tell me to do type of thing. But on reflection, I'm really, really pleased that I've done it because the satisfaction I've got out of it is incredible it turned out exactly how I wanted it to turn out. And it's given me a lot more confidence. Um, I know I've mentioned before, I've, I've been sewing for quite a few years, but probably mainly this last year through lockdown. Um, and I don't, I just doubt myself sometimes and I get annoyed with myself for doing that. I'm quite a confident person. So why do I doubt myself? I don't know. Um, but it's just doing something out of the norm. And obviously I was working with very tricky, slippery fabric and then also stretch lace, which I've never done before. But, you know, if you've never done it before, you you know, just give it a go, don't you? Basically. But I think because it wasn't for me, it was for my mum. It made me really panicky because I wanted to do the best for her. You know, my mum's my number one supporter. So to be able to give something back to her was just amazing. Um, so, yeah, she loves it. It's the wedding tomorrow because you're watching this on Friday. Um, so I'm just I'm just suited that she loves it anyway. That's all that matters to me, really. I just didn't want her to be like, oh, well, I'll, I'll wear it because my daughter's made it, but I'm not really that bothered about it. <laughs> but luckily she doesn't. Well, I hope not, unless she's lying to me. I don't think so, though. Um, yeah, so that's done. So now I'm like, right, I need to start having to think about what I'm going to start making for myself because I haven't really done a... I've been really slack actually. I haven't done a May plans video. I haven't done what I've made in April video. Maybe I'll wait to the end of this month and then do an April and May video. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Mind you, I've shown you some bits, haven't I? So it's not so bad. So I'm going to make myself something quite simple, I think, next. And I think what I'm going to make is this one. I mentioned it before, and that was the Ellie and Mac True Beauty pattern um, that I got in the dollar wacky, whatever it is. Um, so you can do it in a top version, an um, above the knee version, a knee version, too young for this version, and a long version. So I think I'm going to do the knee. I think this is the above the knee version in the pictures, but I'm going to do the knee version because um, I think that'd be really nice for if the sun decides it's ever going to start shining again. And I'm going to use my So Haley Jane fabric that I got, not this month, the month before. So it's a lovely drapey viscose jersey. Um, in blue, cornflower blue with um, daisies on it and stripes. The only thing I'm a little bit worried about is when you stretch it, can you see the colour goes a bit light? So I'm just a bit worried about over the bust because it is quite a tight top over the bust. Can you see with like the Bardot side? I don't know. What's everybody's thoughts? Do we think that when I stretch that but then i've seen who was it that sewed, sewed the kilo wrap dress it's gonna really annoy me was it so amelia my memory shock and i should have written this down as well anyway if it was she was featured in the most recent so Haley jane magazine she made the most awesome kilo wrap dress in this and i didn't notice it stretching across the bust and that's quite tight across the bust isn't it <laughs> so yeah maybe it'll be all right anyway answers on a postcard as always down below please ladies if you have an opinion on this i think it might be all right if it's just to there what do you think mm, anyway oh that's what i meant to say what i'm wearing is actually um a ready to wear item i can't remember where from i don't know if i thought if it's matalan or something like that but how much does this look like the nina lee is it the park blouse? Park Lane? Park? Oh, God. Anyway, I'm like Helen from Stitch Rich Repeat. She never knows either. And I always laugh at her videos. I'm like, yeah, she sounds like me. Anyway, that's me. But how much is that like? And I keep, I've got my eye on that. I, and in fact, Renata from the Twilight Stitcher actually made the most beautiful version of that pattern, a Nina Lee pattern. 
and it's part plain blouse I think it is and I'm thinking I might have to invest because I really like this style this is just in like a polka dot viscose it's really pretty isn't it so yeah it's my, made me think actually I might invest in that pattern because I can see this in a nice plain fabric and I can also see it in um patterned obviously bright pattern fabric anyway that was a side note um other news this week is this bad boy is finished oh yes look at that ignore the crease in the middle i'm going to do something about it she's finished look at her oh look at that so i'm suited with it like I mean, I think that looks really good for paint by numbers, don't you? So I'm going to take that hopefully next week and get them to frame it. I'm going to try and iron this crease out delicately from the back. See what happens. I hope it doesn't ruin it. And then see if they can stretch it a bit, if not, just to see if I can get that crease out. But yeah, and then I might put it up in my sewing room. So I think it's beautiful. And I've ordered another one. Um to start on because I found that really therapeutic and I know obviously we're not we're slowly coming out of lockdown but um yeah I've, I've really enjoyed doing it and a friend of mine that I work with Kelly she also um when I was talking about it she said you know what I think I'm gonna get one of them and she's got three daughters and a husband and they did it jointly as a family so when any of them had a little bit of time or they wanted to do something a bit therapeutic, each of them sat down and did a bit of it, which, I mean, I hear her thoughts on it when she was telling me today, there's a little bit of control freakiness going on there. I would have that issue as well, potentially that other people were dilly-dallying with my stuff. But I thought, what a lovely idea to do that as a family and then hopefully get that framed and put it up, you know, in your house and know that you've all contributed to it. Genius. And then the other, the only other crafty thing, and then I will leave you in peace, is um, I'm doing a cross stitch at the moment. I've started a new one and it's not the best picture, so you can't really see it, but it's a wool and the gang um, cross stitch. And it says on it, in fact, this might be better. This is the actual pattern. You might be able to see it a little bit better. That's it. It says stitch up, look sharp, which I quite like. So I'm just working on that at the moment. So I just do it in an evening when sometimes, sometimes I don't want to do anything in an evening, but sometimes I feel like I still want to be creative and I've not done anything else much that week. Um, now, anybody who does cross stitch will be over the edge with me because I leave my ring in my cross stitch all the time. I know I shouldn't, but I've always done it and I'm lazy and I can't really take it out every night and blah, blah, blah. That's just me. So this is where I'm at so far. It just says look sharp. There's no stitch up. So I've started on it and I'm quite pleased with it. Oh, you can't even see the little... I've got a little needle minder in it that I got from a So Haley Jane box from Samantha Claridge Studios, which is quite clever. Um, yeah, and there's the little scissors in between. Look, but how cute's that? So that's what I'm working on at the moment. I like having... I mean, some people have no doubt are just sewers, you know, and that's what they want to do and they just want to sew garments or crafty things or whatever. But I quite like having a few different things on the go because I think sometimes your mood depicts kind of what it is you want to do. And sometimes I want to sew, sometimes I don't, and sometimes I want to do a bit of embroidery, sometimes I don't. When I say embroidery, I mean cross stitch. I've never done actual embroidery, but I do fancy giving that a go as well. So maybe after I finish this. I'll have a go at that. I don't know whether I'll get as much satisfaction out of it. I'm not sure. So, yeah, there you go. God, I've rabbited on. And I feel like I've talked at 100 mile an hour. I'm really sorry for people that, you know, that can kind of irritate you a bit. Um, sorry about that. Um, but that is because my children are at their martial arts class and I'm trying to get this done while they're not here so they can't barge in. So yeah, go check Renata out at the Twilight Stitcher. Go have a look at her beautiful, ethereal Lyra, unlike my um, busy, outrageously bright Lyra. And see what you think as well. And yeah, pop any comments down below. Let me know if you've made the Lyra, what you think of it, etc, etc. And let me know what you think about my fabric, whether it's going to be a bit too over the boobies.
So I uh, hope you've all had a good week. Hope you all have a beautiful weekend. I hope the sun starts shining wherever you are. And I will hopefully see you next week in my next video. Take care, everybody.